I like this idea that these things that we would consider to be bad are part of this larger orchestra that's actually making some sort of beautiful music that we we just can't understand. Mm-hmm. Like even looking at that that the odd fellow with the the green that a lot of times gets taken as Satan. Mm-hmm. If, if you look at his fingers as he's fretting the instrument, that's really looks a whole lot like Christ's fingers in the crucifixion. And I think I read somewhere like that, uh, even like the way that he has you know, the blackened fingers and mm-hmm. stuff, it, it looks a little bit like the, the victims of ergotism. Even maybe this plague that's happening, that's, that's causing an immense amount of suffering is still part of this major orchestra that we're not privy to. some prayer. I'll pray for us. Holy Father, we thank you for this time that we have together. Thank you for the last couple of weeks as we've thought about the uh, Isenheim altarpiece that uh, we talked about last time and the ways that we saw it impacting our lives and the lives of others as well. And now as we uh, take this conversation further this week, we pray for your presence with us. We pray that you would open our eyes, open the eyes of our hearts too, help us to see things, perceive things about you that will be helpful to this conversation. Pray for our listeners that you would be uh, helping and guiding them too towards the truth and to- towards uh, greater knowledge of the power of what you've done for us and the, also the gifts of art and creativity and, and the material world that you've given us to enjoy, to use, uh, and to participate in along with you and your son. So we thank you for this time together. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. So last time we got into the Isenheim altarpiece for the uh, crucifixion scene. Oh, there's some lambs out there. I just You were praying, and I was like, okay, there's goats out in the yard. Oh, those here. are goats, yeah. Um, but they can just kind of squeeze out. But I don't know if you can see all the, the moms are kind of... <laughs> are they were, yeah, running... There they go, back in. There's a bunch. How of many people. do you have out there? Too many. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there's about. We had about. I love the uh, the the birth videos, the new lamb videos that you've been putting out. Those have been those have been great, and I love hearing their little bells ringing and their little yeah. bleeding. It just warms my heart. Yeah, they're pretty great. Yeah, there's about twenty baby goats that we had this year, so. Wow, uh, they were all. I just you were praying. I looked up and they're out there. They were just some of them were out where they weren't supposed to be. But that's mm. the way. That's the way with goats, is to mm. do that. Um, but no, I have some good. I took some off some some more stuff with the lambs are still kind of. You know they they started. I had a bunch start go early, and then they kind of there's been kind of a lull, um, and so they. So most of them are still, I'm still waiting on to get started, but we've got, I think there's about 15 or 16 lambs so far, but it's, but anyways, it's a lot of fun. So last time we talked about the, uh, the, the closed Isenheim altarpiece with the crucifixion scene. Uh, that's the way that Grunewald designed it for most of the week that people would uh, look at. It was, uh, the piece was in the hospital for those with, well, maybe all kinds of skin diseases, ergotism, leprosy, gangrene. Uh, and it was, we noted that it was a, 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 a way to minister and heal the people in the hospital. And on special occasions, maybe Sundays, um, it would be opened up and you would see the, I guess it's the central pieces, is, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, tonight or today in this episode. And I'll give a brief overview of what's in those central uh, panels, but I don't know, do you guys have any thoughts after we did 
the uh, the first Isenheim episode. How, like, how did that impact you? Because I know some things that it has been doing for me, but as you've left that conversation and left your time, as you've been sitting with this, I'm sure, I'm sure it's gone to work on you. I don't mean, have any 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 reflections. I can't get over the feet. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Um, I don't know that it's it's a just the image of it is kind of, well one it's it's a little bit horrifying uh mm-hmm. so it de- definitely sticks in your brain um i and i know we i mean we spent some time on talking about like the fact that what ergotism would do is eventually you lose those extremities um those far points on your body but as i was thinking about it some more and i i, I think i read something else about uh, the feet, there's blood coming from where he's, where the nails have punctured his feet, but there's also sap coming from the cross. Um, and mm. the, well, I mean, some people have supposed that it's sap. There's two different mm. colors of pigments flowing out of that same, same thing so that the tree is, is bleeding along with, mm. along with Christ. That's that, that has been sticking with me. That led me to, because Jack mentioned the um, uh, song that he wrote about John the Baptist. And so that led me to find that song on iTunes Mm -hmm. uh, called Undone. And I've had that thing on repeat day after day. And uh, that's really ministered to me. The idea of um, sitting in that brokenness, just allowing and accepting that. And there's something about this like that's reality that like that's truth and i i think it it's hard for me anyways to accept truth <laughs> you know i say that i do but really mm. to accept the way things are to accept the truth of my situation and circumstances and and just like like jack said and like the song says hey like they cut my head off like this is this is it you know this is this is what i got this is me there's something very powerful about that for me in a, in a world, I think, especially that we're so much avoiding the reality of how things are, Mm -hmm. you know, and we're so much avoiding just going through whatever, feeling our pain to the max, feeling what we're going through. Instead, it's so much easier just to distract or to numb or just do anything else rather than allow that. So that's been helpful for me. Jack, it looks like you're you're working on something over there. Well, I was trying to take a few notes of um, some stuff as you guys were talking oh. that that I was continuing to to kind of think about with um, that so I, that I just didn't want to forget, um, and then um, just kind of thinking on like pulling some stuff up that I was thinking about in relationship to. Oh, I thought I heard music. Uh, That's why I asked. Oh, I don't know. I know oh, nothing. Okay. okay. I didn't know if you're, you're starting to play something. I was getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I should, I need, we need to, I need to get a hurdy gurdy for when we're talking about all these, um, Renaissance and medieval <laughs> paintings, you know? So, but unfortunately, I, alas, I do not have a hurdy gurdy as much <laughs> as I wish I did. Um, so, I'm going to share the full uh, painting of the central. Is that what they call it? The central pieces? Or the I'm second sh- that's panel? A good, that's a good question. I'm not sure what the technical. Um, let me see what it says here. See what, if Snyder identifies them. So I have it up there. And that this is the whatever Schneider or anybody else may call them. Um, there it is. And it's, uh, you can think of it as, this is probably too coarse, but you can think of it as like the life cycle of Jesus almost (laughs) from his, even before his birth, from the annunciation Mm -hmm. all the way at the left. I'm calling the left, my left. Uh, I don't know what, I don't know what anybody else calls it, but, Mm -hmm. uh, where you have Gabriel, uh, speaking to Mary and we're going to dig into these. Uh, we're going to backtrack and dig into each of these. 
but I wanted to give an overview for us. And uh, so you have Gabriel with uh, Mary in the Annunciation on the far left. Mm -hmm. And there's a curtain, just want to point that out. I'm interested in that. Uh, and then the second one over from the left is an angelic choir. And it's it's so cool. And I, and I can't wait to get into that one. There's a myriad of angelic beings, good, bad, ugly, and all the rest. And they're playing instruments. Super cool. And then, or as Jack said uh, last time, some of these scenes are just bonkers. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those, those bonkers scenes. Of course, I don't know that Gabriel with Mary in the Immaculate Conception is pretty bonkers too, I guess. And then on the right half, the third one over, we have the nativity, and that is with Mary and baby Jesus and with God the Father up in the sky and looking down and a bunch of other things happening there. And then in the far right, we have the resurrection. And the colors of that, I just can't get enough of them. The dark with the, the brights. And you have Jesus coming up out of the tomb and the soldiers being knocked over by the force of the resurrection. So then you have that one. At the bottom, though, is still... which. I hadn't thought of this, but as I'm looking at it now, with the the entombment of Jesus, th that one was present on the very first one that we talked about with the crucifixion scene. Yes. But it's still present here. It's as if well, his body is that seed buried in the ground that's growing up into all of this. Because with each of the, the three different panels that you have, the layers, he's mm -hmm. still there. And I and Grunewald had to mean something by that, I would imagine. That's but, I, yeah, that's go ahead. really that's really great how you called that a seed growing in the ground, um, his body down there. That's I just wanted to say how great I think that expression is. Thanks for well, that. Yeah, I ripped that off from Jesus himself. He said he was a seed <laughs> who must go into the earth and die. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the book's old, so I think it's in public domain now. So that's all right. Yeah, yeah. It is the, it's the essence of the public domain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that's the whole thing. And also, I guess as we talk about these, I, I, I want us to keep in mind something else. And that's the hospital setting. Again, this is, this is in a hospital. This is with people who are dying, who have horrible skin diseases, who are the outcasts, who are hopeless. Their families are coming to visit. Their caretakers are probably feeling the stress and, and the strain and the hopelessness of it all. And we saw the, the leprous, ergo, Jesus and the first one on the cross. And they could identify with that because of his skin. And he identified with them. But this, these sets of, this panel now is no different. It's the same context. With a, also with a message for these people. And I think that's, that's significant. And then I also wanted to say that as I was doing research for this, I ran across an article or two where the author, and it was a really well-learned guy, and he basically gave a big nod to this, to Grunewald's piece in the, in the 1500s and said, and said something like, yeah, this was there to minister to those sick people there. And, and this was, I guess, essentially he was saying this is kind of like the best that they could do in their time. This painting and this art would, would help these people in their mind. But now in modern times, we have psychiatry, we have medicine, we have science. And so let's say good job to them for this. But, you know, we have it better. And I, uh, that drove me up the wall reading those kinds of things. And because I, because this painting is helping these people in significant ways and it can help us in significant ways. And it's doing something that 
science and medicine and psychiatry and countless other things can't do that only this can do. It has the privileged place of doing what it can do that other things can't do. And I want people to keep that uh, in mind too. So how's that for an overview? It's pretty good. It's good. Anything we, anything we need to add? Um, I think I, I really, lo I think the idea, the overview is, is good. And you, you kind of mentioned that it's like, um, a, uh, a timeline in a sense of, you know, that spans Jesus's life on earth. And, um, it's, it's interesting that it's, when I look at it, I, I, I was struck, well, the colors are, are so incredible. And, um, when I, when I look at this thing, I feel like I'm looking at something that like these pictures that, that we get from the Hubble space telescope or the, the James Webb telescope mm. that's out there, you know, it, it really is like, it's, it's a really cosmic image mm -hmm. to me. And mm -hmm. I feel like in a way, it, like, so there's, I had that association you know, recently looking at it and thinking like, you know, in a way this is actually, in a way this is a, a medieval map of the cosmos, you mm. know, or of the whole universe. Mm. And um, I don't know what you guys think about that, but I just, I was struck by that thought and I thought, and I, and I really f like thinking about it in that way. Um, because it's so expansive, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it's so, it's so generative, this, this central, this central kind of panorama from the annunciation to the, to the, to the resurrection it is, I don't know. I, I just, I, it just seems you're looking at this, even though we're we're on one level, it's something that happened. You know, when we, if we think about it historically, you know, a, a thirty-four year time span or whatever, um, and that occurred two thousand years ago. But I think there's so many when I when I start to like look through it, especially like the imagery, and you think about how time works and how even f for lack of a better word, like there's that biblical time that is sort of constructed of these layers or types that these things that happen repeatedly in a sense that ultimately prefigure um, a penultimate f event, you know? And so you have people like King David who, you know, I think about King David when, when, um, Absalom rebelled and, and, and King David flees the city and he goes through, um, the, the garden. I mean, he's all of a sudden you realize he's taking this exact same path that Christ took through the garden and it's just whole, it's like a mirror of, it's just shocking sometimes how that it's like, Oh, this is how, you know, and it's like, there's this, it's to me, it's like the Fibonacci sequence, you know, that, that when you see these patterns in nature and they're, they're extremely striking and beautiful and transcendent. Um, and they're, they're revealing a lot. Um, about the structure of the universe, you know, both on a, you know, ma a ma microcosm and a macrocosm mm -hmm. scale, you know, and I feel like it's a similar thing when things like that happen. And I feel like there's a lot of things like that happening in this panorama. And so it's, so it's not, it becomes way more than 
um, than just a, a Jesus's lifespan on earth, you know, right. I guess is what I'm trying to say with all that long, that long drawn out right. thing. So it's, it's, yeah. So I, I like thinking about it as a map or some, some image of the cosmos and it, that it has traveled through this vast and, reach of space to for us to get a glimpse of it and it's not just the resurrection i want to i want to argue that it's the ascension too so it, it, it's more than it's more than just the 33 years mm -hmm. but because it's the ascension as well it's uh -huh. you know it's for all times yeah and yeah and i can <laughs> say more about that once 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 we yeah, Once no, get, it's good. I think there. it's there. It's really. I love how Grunwald is. I feel like he's really good at being open ended about mm. his symbolism and how he's how he's structured these these images. You know, they're they are what they are. What you know, they are the things they depict. I mean, it, with maybe the angel choir is seen as sort of in its own category, but mm -hmm. the the three. They are what they are, but they're also more, you know. So, like you say, there's it's open enough to, to to re, to talk about the ascension, mm -hmm. in that, and so so that's good. Well, like <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. It's okay, but like even with the re the resurrection slash ascension, mm -hmm. so you have the 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 glowing orb around him, surrounded by the mm -hmm. night sky, which automatically puts you in this very cosmic. He's taking the 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 seat of heaven right now, but that's like a, a a blow up of if we go all the way to the the father. Oh, I might have just lost it. If we go up to the father in heaven on that third slide, uh -huh. he's holding the same orb in his hand with a cross on it. I don't know. I'll show a better picture later. But God the mm -hmm. Father's holding the orb with a cross on it, just connecting those. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, how about we dig into the Annunciation, the first, the first one. There we go. So you have, like I said, Gabriel, with um, sharing with with Mary. Do we want to? Where do you want to start with this? What about this curtain here? We have a red curtain and a green curtain. I've been wanting to ask you guys about those. I know you put curtains in your works, Jack. Yeah, I, I like curtains. <laughs> the uh, it's kind of, you know, I yeah, I just got finished doing the puppet show, so there that there's a lot of curtain imagery, or actual curtains in that, mm -hmm. and uh, it it there it was fun. A friend of mine his and his came with some of his, a couple of his boys, and they he, a few days later he texted me about how they were really excited that because about they really they really saw the connection between you, seeing my the puppeteer's hands kind of reach through these curtains to do things and uh because a lot of my paintings have these hands pulling curtains back and doing things so they were really excited to to see that real tangible connection which was which was great um really good observation on they were really paying attention to a lot mm -hmm. of different things there but that was one of the things um these ones are great you know they built there's that great there's some real depth to this piece like to this particular um i mean so like you have like that green curtain in the back and the red curtain or the kind of pinkish curtain in the front and uh I, there's, there's, there's a lot of things I think about with the curtains. Um, you know, red is this kind of, the emotions are kind of on the surface, right? And it's also a very, um, it's like, it's a, I mean, it's the color of blood. It's the color of, um, the, you know, it's the color of the womb, you know? Yeah. And wow. so even the color of the passage into the womb 
And so, so I lo- it's, it's interesting. It's on the outside, and then you have, like, the green of new life deep inside. So, like, you have this in, that interior sort of chapel space, which is mm-hmm. has that beautiful dove and in, in like a kind of a smoky aura, mm-hmm. which is incredibly rendered. So that whole space is just you can feel you can really feel the light filling that mm-hmm. little interior interior chapel. So it's like an architectural womb space, you know, um, mm-hmm. which is that was kind of the big that was a lot of the symbolism of Gothic those big vaulted huge gothic spaces with filled with these great windows um where that was that this this these were symbol you know symbols of of mary's womb you know wow and architectural so, womb that's what you said yeah, right right wow. so so it's great to see him like using that so beautifully and just the use of the green you know um just some of the, like on the ribbing of the vaulting, there's some green like columns. Mm-hmm. So it's, I, I, there's a lot of like an organic intrusion in all of these in all okay. of the architecture of, of like the of Grunewalds, you know, mm, well, his, wow. his name even means like green wood. Mm. <laughs> so, so wow. I, he's a very, I like, I love how like the earth invades everything. So those, that those those were supposed to be the color of wood. Those instead of b- being green, for instance, the uh, the architecture on the ceiling. But he made them green. He made them green, apparently. Um, and I, unless there's some, unless there was some, some paint over time do weird things. But uh, I don't yeah, remember no, ever no, no, being aware that. Green. <laughs> that that the that these had shifted color over time, yeah, but yeah. that does happen sometimes. But in this case, I think it's so. There's that new life, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just that is they're like veins, you know. Mm. Um, like pump the blood is is almost like sap. So I think that's a cool reference to even to the what you're talking about the sap in the cross Seth Mm -hmm. leaking out. And, um, so I, so I think that's a really important kind of thematic element that is happening in this one is because you have all this red in the front and you have the green in the back. Um, it's, you know, you have the red on Gabriel, you even, you have like Mary's just, she's got really rosy red cheeks Mm -hmm. and really red lips. Um, so, and just that, even that red, just the kind of, I don't know, there's just a real, it's all really suggestive of just flesh, you know? Mm-hmm. And the redeeming, the, already the redeeming of flesh is beginning. Mm-hmm. You know, if you look at her, if her, her hands, the position her hands are in are reminiscent of that crucifixion scene. I think it's Mary Magdalene's hands. Um, mm-hmm. where they're, they're folded, but these are less, these aren't in that grotesque way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're, hmm. I really like the fact that she's, uh, depicted with the book. I mean, with the scripture, I assume, um, mm-hmm. Isaiah, I think that's a, as a matter of fact. Yeah. The, uh, that, that there's a motif in throughout a lot of church art where Mary is depicted carrying scripture one is an indication that that she is a, a kind of a worthy bearer or mother of christ um because she's so steeped in the word um that she would give birth to the word but there's also that she's kind of a a scholar of sorts i guess um kind of fascinating yeah there's so, kind of a there's a little there's a kind of a grisaille element of like Isaiah up in the corner. I don't know if you can pan it yeah, out yeah. or not, Sam or scroll. Uh, up yeah. I wondered, there. I wondered who that was up there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's I's supposed to be Isaiah. Okay. She's reading. Um, She's reading Isaiah. 
I've got a reference here in my notes somewhere, and I'm, I'm struggling to find it at the moment. Yeah, for unto you um, a child will be born, a son will mm-hmm. be given, probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I think that's really. Uh, hmm. I love seeing that guy up there holding his book, like those. And then there's more. Just look at the, look at the crazy. Um, and just all the growth of like vines and tendrils and leaves and like almost like a bramble growing up there, even in the very top of the green, green Gothic arch, there's this little Mm -hmm. sphere Mm. of vines. Yeah. And Isaiah is, I mean, he's, it looks almost like he's, he's carved out of those vines. I mean, yeah. he's just, he's a member of them. It's pretty. But it's, he looks like he's coming to life too. Yeah. 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 It's, but that's it's that. Cool. It's the, it's like what Jack said, the, the whole, the organic matter kind of invading into the architecture. That's pretty mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah. I like that. He, I like what you said there, Sam, about like, he's coming, coming to life. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's all this like matter coming to life, you know, there's all mm. this, um, and you, you, I, you, I think you made a reference before we, uh, maybe in an email that you sent earlier this week about some, some of these elements just seeming to come like yeah. sculptural elements that seem to be coming alive. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I think that, I think it's really intentional And I think it's a really fascinating aspect of this piece, you know, and it's because it's, it's, it's so much about Christ being present, you know, it's so much about, um, because you know what, this, this, if we want to talk about it in terms of the, the ministry to the, the suffering, um, all the, the suffering victims that were being treated in the hospital or just to humanity in general, you know, but it's, it's so important. It's like, he's really trying to get it across that, that everything is coming to life, you know, everything is being filled. Um, and I, I want to talk about that more, but for now that uh, yeah. I just, but I love that. Yeah. Um, I love seeing that. Well, you said matter is coming to life and matter of course, comes from mater, M-A-T-E-R, the Latin for mother. So you have mother coming to life. You have, when you thought that it wasn't uh, possible for a virgin to be with child, she is. You have, via the Holy Spirit, represented by that dove there, uh, God, Christ, using Mary, mater, as the... Um, entrance as his entrance into this world, enlivening, joining with, joining with matter, becoming, becoming one with it, not just like side by side or you know, two different things and one thing, but, but fully divine and fully human together. Really good. Well, why don't we really good. go to the next slide because some of this is really going to come to life uh, yeah. in that in that slide. Yeah, and, and, and I, I just, love. Go, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say I think the curtains again, like, are are the are like they're opening us into the drama of like this whole this everything that we're going to encounter as we go forward, like through these panels, you know, when it was opened up. So it's like that those things being pulled back and it's mm-hmm. like those great i love those great horizontal curtain rods and i don't know there's just a lot of good movement um that's just inviting us in and like leading us th- through what's happening well and gabriel said i was trying to open up to the exact spot in luke but um Gabriel says, says to Mary that the, because she said, Mary says, how can these things be? I'm, I'm still a virgin. And G- 
Gabriel said um, in Luke chapter 1, verse 35, And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born to you will be called Holy, the Son of God. But the Holy Spirit coming on her as a dove and overshadowing her, it's the same it's the same language, what I'm getting at, same language used in the Old Testament for the spirits, the clouds, presence in the whole, the most holy place in the temple where you have curtains. Mm -hmm. And it, the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you just like the, the God in the cloud overshadowed his, mm -hmm. in the ark. And Mary is, Mary is the ark. This is another tangent yeah. we could go down. Mary <laughs> is... She's the ark, and because she contains, yeah. There, there's, I won't, get, I won't go there. But there, there's a lot of an, um, I guess not analogies, but references to the life of the ark in the Old Testament. Yeah, and then to Mary as well. Super great. So the let's go to the uh, the next one, and these are all connected, but I you know broke them apart so we could zoom in on them more. Yeah. Whoops. Okay, so we have the angelic choir here. Oh my goodness, I keep messing up. It's okay. I think it's interesting with, I mean, if you look, when you look really closely, the, they're really the same, it's one whole kind of image, even mm -hmm. though there's a kind of a clear division in mm -hmm. the middle if you look in the foreground, especially there's, you know, these elements of like, there's a, a, this beautiful, like coopered tub. Oh um, yeah. That bridges and, both panels. Mm -hmm, yeah. And then like, there's a kind of a, a, a bed that she, Mary, I, I think she's sitting on it, but it's got these great little carved arms. Um, and the, there's a little, like a ewer or a pot. Mm -hmm. um, chamber pot type of thing. Um, so there's all this stuff in the foreground and you actually realize like, Oh, this is one thing. Mm -hmm. Like this is one image in a sense. Um, even though when you, when you kind of are looking at it from farther away, there's that super harsh division of that dark column separating the, yeah. the kind of, um, the, that little temp, that, space i don't know what's the best way to describe it but it, it, i think it does all these different jobs actually mm -hmm. um so but it's it is truly crazy so what's going on here i i noticed in the in the first one we looked at you had one guy isaiah kind of uh coming alive and but now mm -hmm. you have all kinds of creatures quite literally coming out of the woodwork. <laughs> uh, and I tried counting them last night, but I couldn't, I, I, I lost count. I got up to 40 or 50, then it just got out of control. So it's hard to see in this image that we're looking at. Yeah. Um, but people can look this up and study it for yeah. themselves. But what's There's... going on here? They're playing instruments. There's angelic beings, demonic beings. Well, I want to say too, there's a, I, one of the best, um, reproductions I found online. I'm, I know there's, if you, you can find some, but this, this one, you, there's one called, it's a white hot magazine and it talks, it's an article about the restoration of this. Okay. Um, and maybe I can, I can send you a link so people can, um, that you can post Sam. Okay. It's got a really, you can really zoom in and on this central image um and it's it's really clear um so it would be good that would be a cuz it's important to be able you really have to be mm -hmm. able to cuz we have to remember how huge how huge this thing mm -hmm. is like this is this is um what did we determine last week like 9 feet wide and 8 feet tall this this just this just section this panel, we're looking yeah, at yeah um it's humongous so there's so much there that and so when you're looking at it on a small screen um even even if your computer even if it completely feels like a big monitor it's still mm -hmm. nothing 
to the scale that it actually is mm -hmm. in real life. So yeah. that's really important to think about as how huge this thing is. Um, and so it's good to be able to have that perspective of looking at it from far away and also being able to, you know, come into the details because the details are so important to this, this whole thing. Cause then you, you start to travel and you can enter into the space, you know, mm -hmm. because it's so big, you can really enter into the space. So what's going on with all these musical <laughs> spirits? That's a, it's a good question. I mean, I, I've, I've, in my amateur um, experience, you know, that I've never come across some, anybody that has like a satisfactory or like a conclusive, like this is what is happening in this, mm -hmm. in this space. Um, so it gets, it gets called the angel choir for obvious reasons. You know, there's a lot of angelic beings playing instruments and they, and most of them are kind of focused on Mary and Jesus, mm. um, which are on, you know, in the panel to the right. And, uh, so, and then, you know, of course, Mary is herself is gazing into Jesus's eyes. And then the father himself, like the father, uh, you know, God way up in the clouds up there mm -hmm. is also gaze is, is directed, you know, towards down towards, you know, Mary and Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because the light the light is almost more directed towards Mary, but if you kind of like look at the gaze, if you can imagine the gaze mm -hmm. of God. So it's a really interesting, you know, so there's a really kind of, as big as it is, it's a really, the focal, all the focal energy is going to one spot. Hmm. Yeah, to the the baby face of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then his face, Christ's face, is actually looking uh, towards himself in the slide, in the panel to the right of the resurrection. The way I follow his eyes. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, it's it's uh, the line of them. Like, if you if you just follow the line, because eyes are weird in paintings, right? So you mm -hmm. you have the line of the eyes that like. If, well, we can say, if you look at Mary, mm -hmm. so there's her eyelashes and her mouth are, you know, form lines. So there's her gaze, but there's also the, the is, even if she was, say, looking off to the right, the, li the, the line of her eyes is, creates a diagonal movement oh, towards see. Christ. Yeah. So there's kind of multiple functions um, so if you look at the line of Christ's eyes, he's kind of looking up. Mm -hmm. um, it, so it looks like he's, so he's looking into the face of Mary, but the line of his eyes go back up to the father. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's interesting that, 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 that these things happen, you know, so it's a really important, I think it's really important that there, that, when we look at this painting that we recognize that more, more things are happening than I think it's purposely hard to pin down mm -hmm. what that, that what's happening and not just this central, this, this angel choir panel, but I think in the whole thing, I, I, I feel like, I don't, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know because I wasn't alive then, but you know, we have such a desire to sort of put things in a clean package of like, this means this, and this is happening. And, um, and, and I, but I just don't get that from this painting sometimes that it's, that it's just trying to say one thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really feel that about when I look at the, um, well, there's a lot of things that I think 
about when I look at the 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 part the angel choir they're in a they're in a they're almost in like a temple space mm-hmm. but it's 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 also coming alive so i know there's like in solomon's temple you know there was just there was so much of the carving was these organic forms like pomegranates and palm leaves and all this stuff mm. you know so it was like a forest mm. um and you get that sense from this like again like everything's coming alive the architecture is just so organic and and trace you know just all this stuff moving and swirling and you know there's some of the bases all the bases of all the columns are different and some of them are even like spinning as if they're you know just growing actively growing um but then you also have this canopy inside the space that is yeah. like it feels like a like a bed chamber to mm-hmm. me um and so and then there's this then within that there's this portal essentially you know there's that kind of bluish yeah right under it mhm yeah so there's like this portal to hmm. the spiritual realm that's just there's a flood of yeah that's where they're pouring out of of beings like pouring out so huh. i, I f- there's one level where i feel like this is it's almost like the whole heavenly council. Mm-hmm. You know, you read these these accounts of, for example, like Job, where you imagine like the heavenly the the throne room of God is is really populated with all kinds of 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 beings. You know, mm-hmm. all these different spiritual beings that have different jobs and do different things, and you get that sense in different things that you encounter and um and so like i get that sense from zachariah too you know some of his visions um that there's like this 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 so i feel like there's some of that happening here where it's like everybody's gathered in a space and there's a portal even opened you know so they're like the rift between heaven and earth is is non-existent inside that space Mm. So it's a really potent zone of spiritual activity and, but not just, but, and then, but it's in, it's contained by this, the like matter, material things Mm -hmm. that are coming alive. Um, And so you have this figure, there's kind of a, there's a, a woman who's kind of, a woman-ish figure. I'm not even convinced all the time that it's a woman, but yeah, with a sort looked, of crown on. She's got kind of a red crown, and, oh, and there's I love like this that. great glowing yeah. face. Yeah, and so surrounded by an orb mm-hmm. of light. Yeah, and so she's gazing right out, and um, there's so there's a lot of speculation. Is she like Mary? Her, you know, is she is she a Mary of like that? Some is like she's God's. Mary as she existed in God's mind in the be you know, before Mary actually existed. Um, I right, you know, my, my feeling these days is that I think she's the church. I think she's, I, and I would even, I would even maybe say something bigger, like the church is for me, the church is too small a word these days. Um, you know, she's the bride, <laughs> she's the bride and so there's a great there's there's and I, part of why i say that is if you look behind because there's some mirroring happening mm-hmm. in these so behind mary in the on the panel to the right mary and jesus mm-hmm. is a church oh yeah 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 you know so and there's there's light and there so it's kind of we're also witnessing like the birth of the bride of Christ, Mm -hmm. you know, the birth of the church. And it, and so that woman figure inside that temple really corresponds of spatially with that church structure. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one of my feelings is, and I also feel like that's why there's some, 
it kind of looks like a bed chamber a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like there's some, uh, grant it's granted it's a little crowded in there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, in, in revelation, the church is identified. I'm just looking at her crown, which could be mm -hmm. lamps because mm -hmm. in revelation, the church is identified as, as lamps, right? Lamps with lampstands. I mean, that's definitely some, there's some, uh, I, you know, I guess I think of like the, the, the parable of the virgins with their lamps mm -hmm. and okay. there is, yeah. yeah, there are the lamp, all the letters to the churches. Yeah. Um, yeah. so it's, I thought she was the Holy spirit. Um, cause well, that's the, great. Cause the spirit's feminine pneuma. <laughs> yeah. And you have the Holy spirit as dove in the first one that we looked at. And it's like, where's the Holy spirit here? Well, it's, mm -hmm. And this woman, because one of the jobs of the, you know, quote, sorry, one of the jobs to reduce it down of the Holy Spirit is to point to Jesus and to illuminate him. And that's, you know, exactly what she's doing. But I like the idea of the church, too. And, and uh -huh. I don't think those thing, two things are at odds with each other. Yeah. I mean, ideally, they're one, you know, yeah. I yeah. mean, it is it's because and I think that's the thing you have. I love that that that's where you went with it, Sam. I think it's, I think that's fascinating. And you have, you have that little light filled. There's a clear crystal kind of picture, uh, right in front of that figure on the steps, you know? Um, mm -hmm. right. And I mean, and I think that's one of the reasons some people say that is, that's often like a, this kind of reference to Mary, you know, this, this pure vessel, you know, mm. that is filled with light. Um, but I think ultimately, I think it can, I think all these things overlap and that's why I say it's open-ended intentionally because Mary is the first, you, just, you know, we're all meant to be filled in that mm -hmm. way. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, while. Well, while Mary was the first, I don't, you know, she's not meant to be the last mm -hmm. <laughs> or yeah, the only the, one. The you know? Theotokos, the Christ bearer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it becomes like, it becomes all of us. So I think, I think there's good arguments to be made for all of these, all of these things taking place in this one figure. And I have even one, like here's, this one's way out there in left field regarding this one, but I, I don't even necessarily, there's a lot, some, some have like, there's another angel figure in the back that's kind of a green figure. Oh yeah. Um, that guy and there. Mm -hmm, and he's playing, he's playing a kind of a cello. So I, it is, um. I know. And so some people think that that's Lucifer. Yeah. And if, if I start to look at it in that sense, I actually kind of think that the figure in front is a more likely candidate for Lucifer mm. than the one in the back. Oh, the, the bright angel lady. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, because I mean, yeah, Lucifer yeah. means sh no, shining in the foreground, one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not in um, the front, but. But if I were to like make a Steiner, oh, oh, yeah. If I were to make a Rudolf Steiner play, uh, then like the one in the back might be Airy Man, Araman, and or Araman, however he says that, and then Lucifer would be in the front. Hmm. But the reason I bring that up in this context is again like the the light bearer. Eternity is a strange thing, right? So we don't know what we're looking at where we're looking in time. Um, so I don't know. I think it's just an interesting when people want to, to pull, to pull, like to, to, to bring, I, I lack the words to, to like explain myself <laughs> in, in, in that. And it's not a position that I'm necessarily like, committed to but i but i think i i'm less i think maybe it's like i'm less inclined to want to say that fellow in the back is lucifer mm -hmm. um 
than, you know, just because of what kind of figure he is. Um, a little too on the nose. Maybe a little too on the nose and it just doesn't fit. Like it just somehow it just doesn't fit for me. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, well, that, I mean, the, the, the character in the foreground is playing this cello instrument, but playing it incorrectly. Mm-hmm. The, <laughs> right. I mean, like the, the bow is facing, That's well, true, one, yeah. it's facing, yeah, it's yeah. got the arm is twisted facing. To, I don't mm-hmm. even know how you would do that. Um, but it, I've, I mean, it's also um, almost like it's stabbing itself. Her, mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess it's her. I don't. I don't know. I'm, where? Where did? Okay, so you've got me on this idea of where the where is she looking and what? Where are her eyes? Or the line of her eyes. Mm-hmm. Where is that going to? This the stabbing cello. <laughs> yes, Angel? that person. The person in the foreground. Whatever. Yeah, she's we, looking we, right. The eye line's going right to. Well, I don't know, actually. Yeah, and I don't know if that holds true in every case, but sure. it, it, I think it's. But I do think it's an interesting. In, eyes are just so directive in, in in paintings, and it's always good to pay attention to where, what. Well, and what clearly, this character is very important to whatever's going on mm-hmm. here because it's right. she's not in the bedchamber mm-hmm. with the rest of the people. She's she's out in the foreground. Mm-hmm. Um. Like a Pharisee, so, <laughs> let me show you how much I I love God, how much I love you. Yeah. It's like, come on. Mm, well, I was the, yeah. in the Cimmerillion by Tolkien, which I have not mm-hmm. read yet. I've just heard a lot of podcasts about the intro, <laughs> and I'll, I'll even screw that up. But there's the creation scene where you have, I think it's Melkor, the the kind of the evil being, who uh, God's like the God figure is starting to uh, conduct and stir up all this angelic music. But then Melkor comes in and he introduces a discordant music. And and you think, oh, he's ruining it all. And and that's what that reminds me of, this uh, angel playing (laughs) the cello wrong, playing Mm -hmm. all these wrong notes. But then somehow God uses that uh, discordant music as part of the whole score and ends up working it into the whole piece to make something beautiful. And if I'm thinking that if it's stabbing itself, it's like uh, it's using death is being used to defeat itself and to bring the beautiful victory of the cross. You know, I, I don't want to be crass either. There's the motion that it's stabbing itself, but it's also a a very particular, (laughs) Mm. Um, pointing at its womb. Yeah. Um, as it's looking on the, yeah, on the nativity. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how to go further with that without being too crass, but I, I, I don't think that's accidental either. Mm-hmm. It's, I think it's in, you, you, I think your point is really, you kind of gave me what I was trying to look for earlier, Sam, with, with bringing in the, um, in the similar, similarillion, similarillion, or I can never figure out how many L's are in that word, but, <laughs> um, but like Melkor and all the, you know, those guys. So, but the, the fact that I think what I, what I like, would like when I imagine say, and actually I was, when I think, when I was saying a figure was that there was a, a contender for Lucifer it was actually not not this one that's in the foreground um with the that's closest to us but the actual figure that we were talking about the mm-hmm. the radiant figure of the bride or mary mm-hmm. or the holy spirit um and so i i there's a i there's just a contrast between that figure and this this green earthy figure on the back Mm -hmm. you know he's this guy in the back is really fascinating to me because he's so he's so earthy Mm -hmm. and yet he's got these weird rings on his finger it's this is i'm looking at a different i'm looking at the uh uh, one i can zoom in a little more on and (laughs) yeah i I I can can see a few more details but i can see the rings um, 
Yeah. yeah. So he's got rings on his fingers and he's actually looking, he's actually looking somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I can, he's kind of looking up towards that porthole. Yeah. That's, you know, but he's also, I don't know. It's kind of hard to read his exactly where he's looking, but he's got, you know, he's got some strange headdress. Um, there's, there's some str- crazy stuff going on. And then there's this crazy head that it's, that's really hard to see. Um, outside of like a really close detail between his body, his his shoulder and the neck of the instrument he's playing. There is a crazy disembodied head floating right there. Yeah. Like a really intense disembodied head. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, you know, I, so I, it's hard to not, for me, it's hard to not think of John the Baptist when I see that head floating there. Mm. Oh, the floating um, head, because he was mm-hmm. decapitated. <laughs> he was decapitated, and he's of course he's on the panel on yeah. the outside. You know, he shows up. Yeah, and he's huh. and so, it's I don't know. I just I see that head there, mm-hmm. but, um, but it's a crazy looking head, and there's all kinds of crazy looking figures coming out, and there's, but I guess the point is that it's hard to discern what's we you know was is what's good or bad in Hmm. some ways you know these are spirits that that maybe aren't concerned about good or bad in the way that we are (laughs) you know they exist outside of time and space they happen to be in time and space in this painting because they're taking part in this worship ensemble but normally they're they're doing they're outside of time and space involved in all kinds of things you know that we Mm -hmm. can't understand Mm -hmm. and but it's the the fact that they're it's what you said is like it's everything is coming together like every knee will bow every it's this thing that's like it's the whole and i all of heaven and earth mm-hmm. whether it's good or bad doesn't matter so that's why i think it's i i think in the sense of even everybody you know it does there's no we're not discerning all of a sudden between whether they whether good things or or bad things are in this space every knee will bow mm-hmm. Um, every, everyone will acknowledge. And so I feel like there, there's some of that happening in this, in this space. Mm. It's such a monumental thing. Like that's why it's a cosmic map, Mm -hmm. you know, because it includes everything. Um, I could imagine being one of those patients in the hospital looking pretty similar probably as the ergotism progressed to some of these awful looking creatures and thinking to myself, well, they look worse than I do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. like I, I can find my place in that, uh, in that choir too, um, no matter mm-hmm. uh, what my condition or state, mm-hmm. uh, is, uh, my knee can bow too, and I can participate in this huge scene because like you said, this is a huge painting. I can participate Put, play my small part in this huge scene happening yeah that the uh i like the i like this idea that you these things that we would consider to be bad are part of this larger orchestra that's actually making some sort of beautiful music that we we just can't understand mm-hmm. like even looking at that that the odd fellow with the the green uh, that a lot of times gets taken as Satan. Mm-hmm. If, if you look at his fingers as he's fretting the instrument, that's really looks a whole lot like Christ's fingers in the crucifixion. Hmm. Um, yeah. Wow. And I think I read somewhere like that, even like the way that he has the, 
know, the blackened fingers and mm-hmm. stuff. It, it looks a little bit like the, the, the victims of ergotism. Hmm. Um, even maybe this plague that's happening, that's, that's causing an immense amount of suffering is still part of this major orchestra that we're not privy to. Um, <laughs> but that is going to be beautiful once we're able to, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's like pick up your instrument, you know, no matter what your fingernails look like, no matter <laughs> what your condition, what's going on in this life, one thing you can do is you can pick up your instrument and you can worship God. Mm-hmm. The Kurt Soren Kierkegaard in oh, I forget which book it was, but he has something that I've called the coffin test. He says, Imagine that you're buried in your coffin six feet underground. What can you do? <laughs> <laughs> and he says Whatever you say there, that's your purpose of life. And as I put myself in the coffin, it's like, yeah, what can I do? I can't make a podcast. I can't go to work. You know, I can't do, I can't do uh, any number of things. But one thing that I can do, I mean, you could scream for help, but you're eventually going to lose your voice. But one thing you can do is you can worship there. And it's like, wow, it's one of my purposes to live for something higher than myself. Well, and and even I, I like the idea of uh, allowing our will to have some participation in that. But I mean, despite our will, sometimes like what we're doing, I think if it's, if if we have this this huge train of souls and angelic beings coming into this bedchamber, um. whatever we're doing is somehow playing those notes on God's will mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. God's will, I guess. That's right. Um, and, Be- and because does, he's it, giving us his life to do that. Right. Yeah. 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 I think it's, uh, I think it in a way it's like, such is the magnetism of uh, magnetism is a poor word, but I th- would say such is the goodness of, of Christ that, Everything wants to participate. Everyone wants to participate. Like mm. when, when, when it's unveiled, when he's, you know what I mean? That's like, there will, it's, it, it's not, a, it not it's not going to be a, it's not a coercive participation. Um, it's a voluntary one. Um, and I think that is significant you know and i I, it's this and this idea that everything belongs um include including including i think that's why i like this this that green angel in the back so much it's because he's i feel like he's of the earth in a way you know and these things of the earth are being redeemed you know he's there's uh somewhere in the, I think it's in the Talmud that, you know, there's, I've, I've came across this and I just keep thinking about it all the time. So, um, I probably tell people about it oh, repeatedly and is this idea that every blade of, every blade of grass has an angel kind of standing above it saying, grow, grow, mm. <laughs> you know? And it's like, that's, that's one of the angels that, that is tell, telling the grass to grow, you know? or has been deep under the ground doing some work for billions of years or something like that. And he gets, has a chance to come out and play his cello. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but, uh, and he seems a little lost, you know, he seems a little bit lost, but he's still like (laughs) going for it. Um, I, there's, there's something about the, um, I think the holistic nature of this, um, this, that is the, this idea that, and maybe we, maybe, well, maybe I should get to this after, after we, let's talk about the resurrection actually next. And before I kind of go into my, the thought I was going to start talking about. Should we comment any on um, Mary and Jesus, baby Jesus? 
anything more? I I want to say, like this, the the scene that we were just talking about, oh, jam packed full of things. That's when we look up at the sky today. We see space, and we even call it space. We just see emptiness, and that's not the only way to see the world. You can actually mm -hmm. see the world as you go outside. And you're going inside. You're going inside the space of these, the area, the filled space of all of these creatures. Uh, and there's this, there's layer upon layer, canopies, portals, pouring out, spilling out, filling everything around us. And and I half imagine, maybe more than half, that it has to be space, but we see space because there needs to be so much room for all that's actually going on and mm -hmm. all that's actually really good. surrounding us. It's like, why, like, why does the ocean have to be so big? Well, it has to hold all these creatures, right? <laughs> like, why does the sky, this air around us have to be this vast? It's like, well, it's hold, it holds a lot of shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, I mean We're every every blade surrounded. of yeah, that's right. It's so good. that's so good. Every blade of grass has an angel. Every molecule, it, you know, if you you imagine where you break, you keep breaking it down, and it's still there. You can't get rid of the angel. Mm. And then um, you, even when you go to the the slide right, the panel right next to it with God the Father, man, you zoom in on that. There, are, <laughs> there are tons of angels. Yeah, just everywhere. Multitude. Yep everywhere and they remind me um jack of your your revelation 19 painting where you have the armies uh on the towards the right i think towards the bottom yeah. but just uh, I, yeah i love that style and i love i love also how grunwald did god mm -hmm. here holding the orb with the cross on it surrounded by mm -hmm. angels so yeah. and then i want to point out Baby Jesus is in the uh, tattered loincloth that he's wearing at the crucifixion. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. Sam, I think you pointed out in our email earlier, too, that uh, at their feet, um, there's a chamber pot. Yeah, yeah. Just that um, he is very much a person. Mm -hmm. A human. Yeah. There's a bed, he has to sleep, he has to go to the bathroom, he has to be bathed. Just like us. Just like the patients in that hospital. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and he's clothed in death clothes. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. Which is, I mean, I guess is somewhat what flesh is anyway. Right, which is which is a good, like you look at that fig, the fig tree right there, mm -hmm. is that's a great segue into that just he's flesh his flesh and then you have the the fig tree that was mm. kind of cursed. devised as a of a as a covering for flesh and then was oh, cursed yeah. and it's and then it's you know some people some so there's like uh, there's <laughs> some of the symbolism of like a fig tree is even that it you know it could have been the tree of the knowledge of good and evil um so you have that you have that right in the middle mm. of of the of this this setting right mm -hmm. which is and she's in an enclosed garden mm -hmm. um you know and then you have the enclosed sort of garden canopy temple space you know i mean there's just just layer upon layer an enclosed of, garden are you thinking for like the garden of eden for paradise well, for all of the above yeah. you know because yeah. the enclosed garden is her womb for Song of Solomon also, and virginity yes. and right. Hmm. Yeah. So all of those things, it's, that's what I, there's like, it's all a layer upon layer. That's all talking. I mean, it's all, they're different and they're all talking about the same thing, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's not, it's not an accident that this, that, I mean, and that's even referring back to that, the annunciation, you know, with that light filled, mm -hmm womb uh you know like her womb and architectural womb you know so the, all these kind of sp spaces are talking to each other mm -hmm. you know they're all containers I, I think that was kind of this idea that what does it mean for this 
he's so talking about the incarnation everywhere. <laughs> you know, I mean, this whole thing is just flooded with incarnational light and color, like just being filled with that. Pre I mean, it's, that's why I asked the question, like, can a painting, can a, can Christ incarnate a painting? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, what it just, I, I, you, everything about this painting has always made me feel that he, that that's the case, that that's what's happening. Um, and it's, that's, that's really remarkable, I think. Um, and I, and when you think of, there's this idea maybe to, to back off that, that a little bit and just, and say, what's so remarkable about like what Grunewald is doing is with these in this, this whole program and I'm stealing a uh, kind of some phraseology from, um, from the, he's showing them, he's showing them who their God is. Um, in a, in a, a really beautiful way and whether it's he's showing them who their God is as the suffering crucified Christ who is completely immersed in their in the same suffering that they're undergoing um, and he's also showing them this cosmic panorama of who their God is, you know, from an infant, you, you know, the, from the, all these levels of the enunciation, <laughs> then the, the, the intensity of the world that they lived in and understood of what, um, the turbulence of medieval Europe or, you know, to ultimately like the resurrection. So you have these, this, the depths of suffering and the ultimate like hope of the resurrection. And I'm doing a terrible job of like saying when I'm feeling here, um, of how he is showing them who the, who their God is and like what his, his nature is. And it's just, I just think it's strikingly beautiful and incredible how he's doing it. So I don't know if that makes sense or not, but <laughs> yeah, when I, when I think of if I'm, if I'm looking at this, wondering who, who God is, who who our God is, I think about this painting helps me to see the incredible weakness of God in this sense that when when he chose to take on matter to become flesh, he chose, and I know we're made in the image of God and humans are the highest of God's creation, all that, but there's another sense where we're the lowest, like we're the weakest. Uh, in the sense of to become a child, like even if he became one of those goats that were outside, you know, he could have survived a little, a little, a little easier, but, but here he needs, a, he needs a care of, of a mom, someone to feed him, someone to, I mean, humans are so incredible. We're, we're the weakest. I mean, even a paramecium <laughs> is stronger than we are in that sense to be able to uh, survive and keep going and not to be cared for. But not only be he became the weakest kind of creature, but also becoming a human, you have other humans, sinful humans against you, such as Herod and, and anybody else who wants to take him out. And then you have Satan and his hosts against him too. So when God became a human flesh, a baby, he like put himself directly in the crosshairs of all these things. In at the very weakest point, 
he could possibly be, put himself in. And for me, that would really, that would really resonate if I'm dying of a horrible disease in a hospital, um, realizing that uh, God became weak, very weak, choosing to do that, just like us. That's really good. Let's go to the uh, right, the last, the far right. Can I point out? Yeah. Can I point one thing out that that I was that I is important? That oh yeah. I, as looking at, so there's actually a third curtain, um, and it's there's a it's a black curtain, and it divides the kind of upper two thirds of the space between these two panels that we were just looking at. So like the fig tree and between the fig tree and the little, the temple okay. bed chamber. That's a curtain. And there's a, yeah, it's a black curtain. So there's, huh. if you look, if you follow it up, there's actually, a it's kind of got a red curtain rod Yeah, and it's, and it's actually foreshortened. So it's kind of coming out towards us. Hmm. And that, so that curtain, I think it just kind of emphasizes that we're looking at this um, intrusion into you know, like the coming together of the two realms, mm. you know, because this curtain has been opened up, you know, it's, and it's, it is, it's like a, it's that dark curtain, you know, it's very appropriate that it's black because it's that it's the thing you can't, you can't see through it in that, in that way, you know, it's just, mm. um, so I think that's important element as we move, as we're progressing to you know through the through the drama you know yeah yeah the things you can see and then the things you can't see mm -hmm. but they're all still present together and they all still overlap mm -hmm. and share the same space yeah that is so genius all right the far right slide i love i absolutely love the colors of this as i said the 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 icy cold black and blues but then to the the red hot center of the oranges and yellows and reds. Christ, yeah, it's pretty insane. Christ bursting out of the tomb, showing his, showing his palms, having his scars, light shining through them on his hands and his feet. I think... This is, uh, I mean, he, he has those, those scars, obviously, within the crucifixion. Um, I don't know, one of the common things that shows up in a lot of Jack's paintings with the, with the Roman numeral five, and the grace coming in through these wounds. Mm. I am, I, I, I think it's very fascinating, though, that we've, we've seen, and still, even if, if you were to zoom out and see the entire panorama of this, you would see Christ at the bottom of, of this altar piece dead um it's still mm -hmm. covered with those wounds either either of the of the the scourge or the um or you know in the case of the people in the hospital that they would identify with the, the ergotism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but those wounds aren't really in this i don't i mean i don't know how you would i don't know how you would depict that um it's mm -hmm. it's easier to depict those those nail wounds um, maybe the fact that his entire being now is glowing, right? Uh, all of those wounds and all of those scars are now, uh, the Healed. glory of God coming through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's an important best part of the message to, you know, that they're communicating for sure in the sense of like his, it's really important how clean his skin is in yeah. a sense. Um, and he still bears his wounds in the way that if they're truly identifying here and I think tying it, that was, it's very good to tie it back to the, to the lamentation on the bottom where Christ is dead. You can imagine them. That's, that's the space of the sufferer down there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like that's a human, it's human scale. That's where they're going to be. Like they're, so like their eye level problem with, with that. And then they're looking up to this. Mm -hmm. So they're like both the, the Christ still 
the all mangled is right there and there's right where they are yet they're looking up and it, in a way it's like Christ's wounds are are still present but their wounds are gone you know if you imagine all that destroyed skin is their wound that's their point of their identification so that's that part has been restored um yeah he still bears you know that the stigmata the so i don't know it's i i love i i love i think that relationship is really gr significant if you guys have any theories or ideas about why the gospels say that he still has his wounds i mean like those are the things that he's he's kept he's otherwise whole and healed in order to come back to life, you, ha you have to, but he chose to to return with those scars. Sure. And, you know, I've always, you know, he walks on the road to uh, Emmaus with his, the people that don't recognize him mm -hmm. for several miles, but he still has nail nail wounds in his feet. <laughs> I always mm -hmm. thought that's, um, right, because there it must be healed, otherwise he wouldn't have been able to walk. Yeah. Um, but that they're still present, uh, that Thomas could stick his fingers inside mm -hmm. of him. I, I wish I had a, a more developed theory. I, I wonder too, you know, like if we, if you, if you take a look at scars that you have on your own body, um, I've got one here from my sister when I was nine. <laughs> uh, and I think we all do. Right. Uh, but, yeah, your sister I, was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, one, it's a, it is a it is a memory that I I at this point there's no pain associated with it, but I have this there's there's a memory there and honestly, I probably wouldn't have a memory of that of that conflict at all if the scar wasn't there to remind me of it. Um but it's it's gone uh or the 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 pain of it's gone. I I wonder you know, thinking about Christ being healed of his of his wounds, but the scar is still being there. And in our case, you know, when it says that we in in the resurrection that he wipes every tear from our eyes, <laughs> that the memory of these things is still there as part of um the terrible things that happened. But now I can see it in context of the entire orchestra being played, and I I see how that note sounds in the context of it. You know, even music itself doesn't doesn't work without time. I mean, you can play a note, but that note in rel in relation to the note that comes after it and the note that has died previous to this note being played it makes a melody. Um and so our scars being being this this one note that, or the, 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 the wound that happened being this one note that's being played presently, but this scar somehow being the note that's died before. And now I can start to hear this melody. And if we can see that in the resurrection, when all of the scars are there, but they're healed. Now the pain is gone. Now it's just beauty. Um, maybe that's, maybe that's one of the reasons the gospel makes it very clear to us that those things are there. I really like that. Yeah, me too. I really like that. And I guess even when I ask a question like that, when people ask a question like that about scars, it's like you're assuming something. You're you're assuming that they're bad. Like, it's probably like, why why even ask the question? Wasn't that the healing time? <laughs> you know, you think back to a horrible time in your life, but then somebody perhaps was there for you, ministered to you, gave you something, provided you with something, comforted you. And it's like, do you really want to forget that? Like that was one of the best moments of your life when that happened. It's, it, it's story. Hmm. I mean, scars are story. Hmm. Um, and story is a big deal, you know? I mean, so, and it's a story we tell over and over and over again. Um, 
and it's a big part of that story. So, I mean, you, you think about, you know, it's, it's almost, you know, a, a cliche, you know, the old men sitting around talking about their scars, you know, comparing them and, uh, but it's a way to, I think we continue, he, we continue to identify with him even in his resurrected state, you know, because we still have wounds also, you know, and it's, there's something else he does. It's in a way that like God does something far more. He does something more than just make things go away. Kind of like you, I think you were saying that Seth, you know, it's like, there's, there's something more glorious than just making bad things go away. Um, it's, it's more, it's more beautiful for them to become windows mm-hmm. or doors, um, that continually pour grace into the world. Um, and that we participate in them, you know? And I think the stigmata is probably not as rare as legend would have it, you know, that, that, you know, there's, there's the, the actual form that it could take, like such as St. Francis, you know, where it actually, the wounds actually appear on his body. Um, and he's not the only one that that's happened to, but I think that there's, it's, you know, you could talk about bearing our, you know, bearing our cross or something like that, but I don't know. I think it's just the wounds that we carry. Um, and, and, and it is in our own lives becomes a way, you know, that we are a doc, you know, we're a document of, of his faithfulness. You know, I always kind of, think about like that of like, I want my life to be that, like a, that sort of like a living document (laughs) that bears witness to God's faithfulness and God's goodness. And like, um, and this, I think, so the scars do that, Mm -hmm. you know, they also communicate to me just in how, just in how he is with his arms up raised. It's like, to me, this is a position of peace, right? Uh-huh. It's like, I know you guys did this to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I know you you nailed me to a cross. You scourged at me. You you did all this to me. This was horrible, horrifying. Mm-hmm. But I come in peace. Like, we're cool now. <laughs> like, more than cool. Um, and that's, that's, that's encouraging. That's hopeful. The, the ways that I've fallen short the ways that I haven't measured up the debt that I owe to God. Um, he's, he's raising the signs of that as peace and welcome and acceptance of me. What debt? The debt that I owe God in terms of (laughs) what debt? What do you mean? What debt? I mean, what debt? Oh, I mean, that's, that's what he's saying. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. What yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's. I there's another fascinating thing about his arms, that and being in that position. As and if you look, if we if we go back and look at the Annunciation, is if you you can kind of think of the Annunciation has these really strong, like Gothic arches, which are like triangles. And then you have the vertical. So if you think about that, that's alpha. And so, and then Christ on the end is Omega. So you kind of have the alpha and the Omega of, Mm. you know, and of these two, that's pan, that's framing this whole section of the, of the painting, which, to, again, to me, just reinforces that that co- map of the cosmos, you know. Seth, can we read that poem? Can you read that poem? I yeah, I can, I can. Uh, 
I one comment, uh, Jack. You know, oh, you yeah. made a comment early on in the uh, annunciation section that it's just so generative to look at. Man, this just makes me want to sit down, and, uh, do something, make something. Because if that's what one thing that art does, I think, but uh, more so, I think. Uh, recognizing what God has done um, makes you want to respond in kind in whatever, whatever you have at hand, give it back to him. Um, mm. This is, this is a, a poem in a series of poems by Mary Carr. Uh, the, the series of poems is called descending theology. And it also has one about the uh, crucifixion, but this one specifically is called the resurrection I really like, um, if you read it, well, <clears throat> maybe I can, uh, you begin to feel, uh, you feel these things in your body as Christ comes back to life mm. from the far star points of his pinned extremities, cold inched in black ice and squid ink till the hung flesh was empty. Lonely in that void, even for pain, he missed his splintered feet, the human stare buried in his face. He ached for two hands made of meat he could reach to the end of. In the corpse's core, the stone fist of his heart began to bang on the stiff chest's door and the breath spilled back into that battered shape. Now it's your limbs he has come to fill, as warm water shatters at birth, rivering every way. That's Descending Theology by Mary Carr. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's pretty accessible on the internet. Yeah, it is. Um, so if you can find the the whole series, the crucifixion, mm. the crucifixion one does kind of the opposite, where you feel the the life leaving his body in all the extremities. One of the first things that stood out to me was the the temperature <laughs> changes. In the <laughs> beginning, you have the ice, cold, inched in, black ice and squid ink. So you have coldness and ice. And at the end, you have warmth and water and rivers flowing. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, I mean, we go back to that Annunciation scene where we're talking about just the birth of Christ and the nativity. Um, I mean, it's our it's our birth. I mean, what she says, it, now it's your limbs he's come to fill. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, the, the, from the first line from the far star points of his pinned extremities mm -hmm. uh the star points being the nails in his hands but also this the star of annunciation uh in mm -hmm. the sky that drew the shepherds um so I, I think like a reference to his incarnation there he had to be he was fully man fully god but being nailed as well really like the fact that she emphasizes so much about the flesh of Christ, the, I mean, the humanness of him. Um, and one thing, I mean, Jack covered it pretty well, but just this, those, those on the Isenheim altarpiece, the, every single one of those things, you have the foreground that all are in common too, but you also have these things that are coming out of, out of the heights um, and then Christ rising back up to it. But, you know, you have the angel descending, and in this in this poem, I think she does a good job of um, focusing on the flesh of who Christ is. Um, and I really like the way she depicted death too. <laughs> it's just like it just gets darker and colder, mm -hmm. uh, and until he he missed even the pain that he experienced. He missed his splintered feet mm -hmm. uh, and the yeah. human. The, the the human stare buried in his face. God, I mean, just yeah. He and that that missing 
the the matter and the humanity yeah. and the creation makes his heart come back uh, mm-hmm. and begins to bang on the door of his stiff chest. That's I mean that's just it's pretty wonderful. He ached for two hands made of meat. Carney, <laughs> Carney, yeah. that's where incarnation yeah. comes from. Yeah. Yeah, that he could that he could reach. I mean, like that he could reach to the end of them again. You know, like he's just been shrunk into this into this darkness, and he's like, I just reach back out into him. It's I I love that it's he's he's resurrecting himself. <laughs> you know, I, it's funny because in my I think just in my Sunday school brain, mm-hmm. I always <laughs> think of like God resurrecting. Jesus, right. you know, but it's there. I mean, it's that I, the, the Trinitarian reality is that he's, I, I don't, there, there's something really in, re, wonderful about him, that f, him resurrecting himself, like just the fight almost that's in that's yeah that's being you know and you imagine like you that, that thick the the thick tomb that stone tomb and the grunwald you know mm. you can just imagine him like pounding on that thing you know from the inside it's it's pretty remarkable mm. Mm. yeah he said that i lay down my life and I take it up we'll again. Take it up again. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then the so, word, the word now at the end of that stanza. Now it's like it's your time now. Now it's mm-hmm. your limbs. He comes to fill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that line break there. It, it's it, at the end of the stanza, but it's like at the end of that line. Yeah. With this expectation, what comes next? Yeah. Um, and you have to, you know, shift your eyes to the back of the line and and start over again and say, oh, it's it's me this time. Yeah. Am I being resurrected? Am I, have I died? I mean, I guess that's, if he's come to fill my, my limbs, have I died? Have I accepted that death? I love, and the image of the warm water shattering at birth, you know, just the amniotic fluid bursting. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, the new life that comes, you know, I mean, I think that's the thing that's so beautiful about all of it is like, it's, it's as mun, mundane in a sense, like uh, as the birth is not a mundane thing, but sure. it's mundane in a sense that it happens all the time. Yeah. You know, and it's remarkable that it's never, I never get tired of watching lambs being born. You know, it just never gets old. And that the new, just when new life comes, you know spring trees pushing out leaves never gets old um watching things germinate seeds germinate and come push up through the soil never gets old um Hmm. and so I, i think it's i think it's really beautiful that at least how for me it's like the fact that it happens over and over and over again even to me like i'm constantly dying and in need of resurrection like every five minutes it seems like you know and uh that and that it's not it's not far removed, you know, and maybe that's why what I keep like feeling with Grunwald is it's like, it's so imminent. It's so, inf- it's so there that even, even the craziness of the angels is still doesn't feel f- far away to me. You know, it's um, even though the, the painting is of some, you know, from, you know, it's 500 years old, essentially. Um, it doesn't feel mm. 500 years old in the sense that, I mean, it feels thousands of years old and it feel, but it also feels exceedingly like accessible 
to me. Um, and maybe it's just because I look at it all the time. I, I, have, I mean, it's all, I have it hanging on the wall in my studio and I've, I, I've had a little model model of it for 30 years, you know, so it's like always in my space. Um, but it's that thing of like matter being filled with the presence and, and like the, he, you know, you got, you, you guys kind of reference felt, you know, when he's like, he missed his splintered feet, um, lonely in the void, even for pain. Um, it's so easy as at least I felt this growing up as a Christian that it's so easy to, or so tempting to want to disassociate with the world, you know, in the sense, the, the earth and of it's, it's in a way that, that is in a sense, that's kind of, um, Gnostic, you know, there's a, there's kind of a Gnostic strain to modern Christianity, um, that insists that all these things are evil, you know, and, uh, and I guess that's why I sort of rejoice when I see the earth, part, so much of the earth participating in what, in the action in that Grunwald. And, this, and to the extent, like so much matter is participating to the extent, like the painting itself, which is matter, you know, the painting, this is a, it's a, a physical object made up of wood and paint and oil, you know, all this, all the things, the colored dust that we talk about. It's so fully participating in this, this, the, this pr program, you know, the pattern that, yeah, the pattern, mm -hmm. the incarnational reality of everything that God does is incarnational and all of, all of matter, all I'm just in more and more, um, com, uh, a, um, it's just how I see things, you know, it's, and so it's to see like him, like, I can't feel my feet anymore. This is, a, you know, my feet, which were made to be on the ground, you know, that were made to walk barefoot in the garden, which were made to like, get goat shit on, you know, or to be barefoot in the grass or in the water, like to participate in this creation, which is not a superfluous like thing that's just going to get tossed aside. You know, it's a full participant. Mm -hmm. um, the ma material is so like I, I love that this painting is 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 doing this thing where it's participating and it's inviting us to participate. It's, and it's presenting so much of who God is. It's just so much that's happening all at once. And it really make, I, I just really love that a lot. If I, do you remember when Chris Farley on Saturday night live, speaking of do, <laughs> he Chris Farley would, he would interview, he had a sketch where he would interview somebody and he's, and he'd be like, you remember that time? And it, you know how he would, and how Chris Farley was and, and he'd play this thing up. You remember in this movie when you did this one deal and, and he'd lead up to it and, the, and he, and he just would be like, that was really great. <laughs> and I think he really stumbled on a really, I love, I also had an art teacher who, would sort of talk about art that way. And he would just say like, can't we just agree that this is really wonderful? How this, you know, it, he would talk about a line or something in a paint, in a drawing. So we would be having a critique and he'd just walk up to it and it's like, see how this line is wrapping around the figure here. And it's kind of thick as it goes around the shoulder. Can't we all agree that that's really nice? 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I, and Chris Farley saying like, that was really great. And I just want to, that's what I want to say to Grunewald. You remember that painting he made? <laughs> <laughs> you know, had the you know had the cru- the cru- the crucifixion on the outside, and then you opened it up, and it had it had the Annunciation, and then it had this crazy fucking <laughs> whatever was happening there, and then the nativity, and then the resurrection, and then you opened it again, and it had Saint, Saint Anthony Saint and all- battling demons. Do you remember that? It was really great. <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. I want to take that line into into my life. Just at home, looking at the kitchen table, isn't that really great? Mm-hmm. Looking at the oak tree in my backyard, one of the three, isn't that really great? Uh huh. That's right. Everything, everything belongs. I, that's, that's what I get from that, that beautiful choir of angels. Hmm. Go ahead, Seth. I, that's a, that's a, it's really great, man. <laughs> well, there's this. There's a, have you heard of like the hiddenness of God? People are talking about that and like, just show me God. And it's kind of cliche, but Mm -hmm. just show me God and then I'll believe and just have him speak to me and then I'll believe. And how can you, it's hard not to see him when you go, when you go anywhere. Like how else is he going to show, how else is an invisible how else is a spiritual thing other than inhabiting everything that that I can see, that I can perceive that's around me? He is showing himself. He is speaking. It's like, I don't know. We, 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 we don't go to Romans 120 <laughs> enough, and we only use Romans 120 for the to prove that like somehow uh, people who've never heard the gospel can go get into heaven. Like that's all it's for, but it says God's invisible attributes, his divine nature, his eternal power have been clearly seen from the beginning of time in the things that have been made. It's like they're clearly, they're clearly seen from forever. Like there's never not been a time in the things that have been made. And a painting like this really, it, it reminds me of like, you see a a whole bunch of birds flying in the sky, like thousands of them. And for a second, they like form like a face or like a, like some kind of constellation, like a archer or something. And then you look, you're like, what was that? And they go back to normal. (laughs) The murmuration. Yeah. The, murmur, the murmurations of starlings. There's actually like a form of like divination too, where people would, um, I can't remember what it's called. Um, augury. Augury. Thank you. Seth would know. I'm glad oh, you his, knew that. That's Seth. his James Joyce. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So it's good stuff, <laughs> but it's just, this. that it's the thing. It's like, that's there it, in a way it's, it's it's kind of i the the old cliche like there's two times of two types of people in the world um like well i think what about bob he's like there's two types of people in the world those who like neil diamond and <laughs> or something but um but it's there there's two types of people in the world those who you know see augury and those who don't um you know those who have eyes to see let them see those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Um, I think that it's interesting that the hidden God, like his very hiddenness is his, 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 is him speaking. And it's, it's a fascinating part of who God is that all of, all of 
like everything is him speaking uh, you know <laughs> that all of the whole the whole thing is his language all, all of life is that is him like talking and so it's just um sometimes it's if you have i don't know if you haven't been taught that and you, you think we I mean we don't do people a very good service when we kind of say that everything is um that literalism is the highest form <laughs> of encounter mm -hmm. um you know so but that's a whole nother conversation so i there's a oh, i probably brought this up before and it may be a, a okay place to wrap up mm -hmm. uh that wendell berry would take his daughters on a walk or his daughter on a walk she's recounting this about him and she would he would just say look and see like point things out um things that she would have overlooked otherwise and i it's just a it's just a training of every day going out and like, look, there's a leaf, a leaf that you didn't know. Mm -hmm. This is the thing that makes up the leaf in its material. Uh, look at the way the light shines through the leaf. Uh, look at the way the light shines through the leaf in October as opposed to June. Uh, look at you know and like and if you take that walk every single day, then then things begin to grow and then eventually, if you take that walk every single day for forty years, this tree now has a name, and this tree then you, then you begin to see the angel in that tree keeping it alive day to day, um, moment to moment. Uh, but it has to be, it has to be trained. You're, I mean, you're exactly right. It's the exact, that is the, I see that as the exact corollary to Elisha and his servant where, mm -hmm. where Elisha asks that God would open his servant's eyes and he sees all of heaven's armies that are there, you know, when they're being pressed by the you know Syrian army and in in that case it happens in a moment but usually that perspective that has to happen in the way that Seth is describing and it's like you're you're building a relationship just you have to build a, a relationship mm -hmm. and you can build a relationship with all of the with with God's voice by just like what you described and it's really wonderful it's beautiful well thanks for joining us it's been episode seven seven or eight of the color dust podcast you can uh, learn more about us at our sub stack something color of dust <laughs> sub stack or color dust.com i did uh inaugurate our youtube channel for us um, which does not contain our full videos, but the full audio of these episodes. So if you listen, I know a lot of people just use YouTube to listen to the audio. So you can do that with all our episodes now. Plus, I put on little clips and shorts and highlights and things like that for people. Otherwise, the full videos are on our Substack, on our main website. And you can see our wonderful, shining, pretty great faces. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and also the lambs or the goats from yeah, from time it. to time and the paintings show up too for. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and the paintings too and uh, anything else that's visual and you can learn uh, how to support us um, if you're inclined to do so to keep keep us going and uh, oh if you could leave a review too on Apple or Spotify that that helps it this to show up and like I know podcasts say that a lot but i like i tried it and like <laughs> we literally don't show up like you got to <laughs> scroll and scroll and scroll in order to find anything and um the, so the more people who leave reviews and and that helps it to be uh seen but so. you can think about the scrolling as like a pilgrimage you know <laughs> so if you want to go on a pilgrimage that's okay too yeah <laughs> that's good and now may you see the beacon fire rising before you, and may you have the courage to light your own fire. And may it burn a hearty flame no matter the storms or battles without, or the doubts and the traitors within. And may others see your burning witness, and may they be inspired to light their own 
fire. And may we all receive the outcome of our faith, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. All right. See you guys.